My name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And the theme of our show today is Engineering Outreach to Students. And as I have as my guest to explain the Engineering Reach to Students is Connie Kelly. Connie is the Education Chair of the Chicago Section of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. And also I have Bob Johnson, he's a structural engineer, and he's a STEM activist. Thanks for being on our show, Connie thank you and for Bob. Having us. I want to thank you, Frank, for having us on. It's not often you have engineers <laughs> on TV, and we can explain to the audience, your audience, what engineering is all about and how we're reaching out to students. Yes, yes, that, and, and I'm glad. And now, uh, uh, Bob and Connie, uh, how and when did you start your STEM outreach? And I said STEM, and who could explain what STEM means when I say STEM, S-T-E-M? Well, it's science, technology, engineering, math. And engineering is often the, the hidden component. People don't think of engineering, but without engineering, STEM is just a bunch of old consonants sitting around. Yes. So engineering holds everything together. Now, uh, do you have an engineering degree, Connie? Yes. In, in I'm what? an electrical engineer. Electrical engineer. And Bob, how about you? Are you an engineer? Yes, I'm a structural engineer, a licensed structural engineer uh, in Illinois. And uh, both Connie and I both went to IIT roughly at the same time. <laughs> Never met, met Never up. Met. But, but in engineering, they're both male and female. Absolutely. And, and there's a lot of female entering the engineering field nowadays. Uh, you even see them as astronauts. And, and they're, they're not scientists, majority of them are what? Engineers. Engineer. Now, um, under the STEM program, the science, technology, engineering, and math, how do you do your outreach? Well, I got started in 1989 when my daughter's um, first grade teacher asked me to come in to talk to the five and six year olds on what structural engineers do. Yes. Now, how do you do that when a, a five and six year old has no appreciation of what engineers do? Even the uh, parents have no idea what structural engineers do. And I really got into it and started building a collection of models to show children how buildings stand up. And when you think about it, those five and six year olds in that class, they're all engineers. <laughs> Why? Because when they started off as children, what did their parents give them? Blocks and Legos. Lego. <laughs> so they were building with uh, structural engineering, uh, learning about it when they were building their uh, buildings. It's now, the question is to advance them to keep on doing it when they become uh, teenagers. And like in my case, I took it up as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you do your outreach, Connie? Well. I got started pretty young. I, I've been a ham since I was in single digits. When I was a teenager, I became a CAP cadet, Civil Air Patrol, which is Air oh. Force Auxiliary, and got into aviation and aeronautics, oh. and even more of the electronics, and ended up going to IIT as an electrical engineer, uh, and <laughs> just wanted to make sure everybody had as much fun as I was having. In, in the Air Cadet. Uh, are you still involved in the Air Cadet? Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. And, and explain, what is the Air Cadet? Uh, well, Civil Air Patrol has a cadet program for teenagers, and CAP is the official auxiliary of the United States Air Force. It was chartered by federal law back in the 40s, yes. and it has three missions, search and rescue, cadet program, and aerospace education. So aerospace and cadet program kind of dovetail into each other and there's a, a, a lot of 
good material available through those programs and reach a lot of kids that way because and this is a very structured yeah. program yeah. so it's um, and it's a great way for kids to try something and decide whether or not they like it like do you like working with radios do you like working with computers do you like flying airplanes before they go and commit big bucks to going to college and yeah. spending money and finding out in senior year, I really don't like this and yeah. I want to do sure. something else yes. And, and, and is there uh, offices throughout the state of Illinois, Chicagoland uh, area? There are, there are squadrons throughout the state of Illinois, and there are squadrons throughout the, uh, the United States and on, military ba on Air Force bases and military installations worldwide. See, uh, you hear that, kids, that uh, you could contact the, uh, what's the name of the program again? Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol, if they're interested in anything to do with Air, Air Force. Well, flying, you don't have to be a pilot, right? You don't have to. You be don't a pilot. have to be a pilot. For every one in the air, there's ten on the ground, but there's radios, there's computers, and we're very big into computer uh, uh, security. Uh, we're involved in the Air Force Association Cyber Patriot Program, uh -huh. which is a competition. Again, one of our competitions for kids that um, uh, allows kids to crack. A system that they set up and then they have to set up a system that other people try to crack and so it's very timely in today's oh, hacking yeah, world yeah, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to hone your skills on on cybersecurity yeah now now Bob um, tell us a little bit once a year you have engineering week what is engineering week and what kind of functions or what, what activity is going on during engineering week well, Engineers Week was founded in 1951 by the National Society of Professional Engineers to bring a public awareness of what engineers do. Uh, that continued on in the 50s and 60s, even uh, into the 70s. Then something kind of changed in the 80s and 90s when they incorporated student outreach programs to introduce children and students to the engineering profession. And uh, there's a host of activities that play, take place during Engineers Week throughout the country. Uh, Engineers Week is always celebrated the week of George Washington, our pre first president's birthday. Not President's Day, but <laughs> George Washington's actual birthday, February 22nd. Next year, Engineers Week will be celebrated February 17th through the 23rd. And during that week, there's a host of programs throughout the country. But if I may say so, Chicago has one of the most dynamic and uh, diverse um, programs in the country. Yes. Yeah. Now, why did they pick George Washington? He's the first American engineer. First American engineer? He was engineer? a surveyor before he was <laughs> a, a general and a president. I that see. was land surveyor, which is a, uh, a form of engineering, yeah. was the was his profession. And a very part of our history. Yes. Dividing the states up into different areas, different states, and that's why it was so important to have a surveyor doing all this here. And that's why, uh, is that why he became president? Because he was an engineer? <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you saying that uh, uh, engineers should run for presidents and for offices? Well, we, Absolutely, because we, we, we think well. Yeah. We, we have logical minds. We've had a few, uh, believe it or not, we've had a few presidents yeah. that have been engineers. Yes, yes. And a lot of the astronauts that go up in space, are they scientists or engineers? Well, uh, the expression I hear is when I hear the term rocket scientist, rocket scientist, I get upset because there's no such thing as rocket science. It's all engineering. Yeah, to see. build a rocket, it's engineering. Yeah. There's a great expression uh, that engineers like to use. Uh, science discovers the world as it is. Engineers create the world that never was. When we eventually go to Mars, that's going to be an engineering achievement. Engineering achievement, excellent. Now, Bob, during Engineering Week, explain the different activities. Now, you have uh, uh, different, uh, maybe 10 different types of activities going oh, on in February, right? It's, it, there's and, a whole and, and all through the year, uh, uh, yes. all through the year. But, uh, but during, during Engineers Week, there's a host of dedicated programs that we've been hosting for 30, 40 years. Um, 
what I call the signature program is the IIT STEM Expo. That's held every year for the past like, almost 35 years. It's over 35, 40 years now. Uh, 84 was the first year, I think. That's the uh, IIT STEM Expo, but it's hosted in uh, their satellite campus in Wheaton, Illinois, uh, Rice Campus. Last year's program drew 2,000 people. 2,000 kids? Or? Yes, pa parents and the kids. Yes. And it's the engineers talking to the children, primarily K through eight, but as I tell people, high school students and even the parents will come away with a better appreciation of what engineers do. And the signature thing feature of this program, it's not the engineers talking to the kids, but it's the engineers working with the kids with hands-on interactive displays. And there's a host of activities that the kids can learn about engineering. And, and, and Bob Johnson and Kelly, Connie Kelly, are very much interested in getting the kids, if they're in grammar school, high school, college, or above college, to come and learn about how to become an engineer and what an engineer does. This is what they do now. They're, they're uh, out there talking to any group that wanted to hear them talk about engineering and how to get involved. That's why I'm very glad to have Bob Johnson and Connie Kelly on my show. Thank well, you very glad much. Glad to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Now, Most people don't want to talk to us. We're very <laughs> glad to be here. Yes, because engineering, engineer will save the planet. Engineer will protect the health and welfare of the people. Engineers have saved more people than the medical profession. Why is that, Bob? Because of clean water. Oh, clean water. The history water. of the world actually is a history of uh, civil engineering. When you go back to the Romans yes. and their sewer systems, and they look at today's society, um, the countries with the cleanest water are usually the most productive and the most, most healthy. healthy. And it's all a function of having clean water. Yes, and, and why is that? Because our body, is 67 percent of water or plus water you know we need water to live and that's why if we don't have clean water water filtration plants or even to treat the two peas in the pot yeah. you know uh, because we uh, an engineer designed plants to treat the two peas in the pot yeah. and the two peas in the pot are poop and pee <laughs> so we need everything to protect the the health and welfare of the people Continuing on with regards to uh, Engineers Week, yes. the IIT program is just one of many programs. The Chicago Architectural Foundation, which has just rebranded itself the Chicago Architectural Center, they host a big Engineers Week program. Next year it'll be February um, 23rd and 24th uh, at their new uh, facility. I'm still waiting for details on that program, but for many years, the Architectural Foundation hosts a program to show the children how engineers have built Chicago's <laughs> skyline. Yes, yeah, and also you have the National Society of Black Engineering program. They, they have a, a program dedicated to the uh, uh, black engineering students yes. and kids to introduce uh, African American engineers who are, if I may say so, underrepresented in the profession yeah. to try to point the uh, out to them, there are careers in engineering for them. Yeah, and it could, uh, the list goes yeah. on. Northwestern and on. Girls Day event. Yes. Yes. Introduce a girl to engineering. Uh, we have National Engineers Day. We've got the Math Counts program. We've got a number of small expos that are uh, hosted locally. IIT obviously is the largest one and has the largest participation of societies, but a lot of the schools and a lot of the public libraries have activities. Public libraries are really getting into uh, STEM in a big way because they've become the new babysitters. As the schools are cutting back on their after-school programs, where do the kids go? Sure. The local library. And so the libraries are running educational programs and many of them in the STEM areas, everything from programming to structural to keep the kids occupied until mommy and daddy get yeah. home from work. And even the Argonne National Laboratory have a girls day. They yes. have a girls day. Which is an Argonne National, what is the Argonne National? That's a, a national laboratory that uh, 
does a lot of technical uh, research yes. uh, on uh, various uh, technology science programs. Yes, yes. They have a lot of battery research yes. going on at Argonne. Water research. They're, they're doing a the research for us at the Metropolitan, for the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. They were uh, one of the first nuclear laboratories. Yes. And they're doing the Manhattan a, Project. Yes, they're doing a DNA research for us, for the water. And then throughout the week, um, some of the uh, engineering societies, namely the Illinois Society of Professional Engineers and the Chicago Engineering Foundation, they go into the schools, the city schools, and give lectures uh, promoting engineering to educate the kids uh, on what engineers about, if I may say so. If you look at your curriculum from K through 12, there really isn't any courses in engineering that is taught to the children. So it's the engineers coming in to uh, show the children, yeah. the students, the high school students, yes, there are other uh, careers out there besides uh, doctors, lawyers, professional <laughs> sports players. Yes, yeah. And, and also at, a, at the district. And well, four years ago, the national educational standards were modified to include engineering. So all these teacher who've never had an engineering course in their whole life yeah. are scrambling, looking for resources and trying to figure out how to incorporate engineering into their curriculum. Because a lot of them took biology, they yeah, took yeah. natural science, but engineering is something that most high schools and grade schools don't even come close to teaching. Yeah. And so the teachers are even scrambling, looking for ways yeah. to approach engineering because now it's a national standard. Yeah, and this is where they could call Bob Johnson, they could call Connie Kelly, or they could then call myself at the Water Reclamation District, and we'll be glad to send out a speaker to talk to the kids about Engineering Week and also what we do. It covers a whole facet of different types of engineers uh, that we could talk about there. Now, uh, uh, so what else is there in the way of engineering programs competition that we could talk about? Bob, uh, uh, well, first of all, I want to mention that at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, we'll invite school, schools to come in because their kids have done a science project. And we will give them an award to explain their science project to us uh, at our, one of our meetings. And then we'll take them for a boat ride to show them the waterways out here in the uh, Chicago waterways and take them out to Lake Michigan. Then they'll spend the whole day with us. And also we may even give them a tour at the largest wastewater plant in the world. The largest wastewater plant that we have here in Cook County and very few people in Cook County knows what we have here. And because we are the expert in treating wastewater. Now, Bob, uh, what else other programs? We have, uh, there's another program out there that's called Future Cities. Okay, Future City <laughs> has been, was started in 1992-93 yeah. as part of National Engineers Week to reach out to students to introduce them to engineering. And it was actually founded by the electrical engineers who were the um, chair of Engineers Week back in 92-93. The Future City competition consists of the students, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students, first designing their city on a computer. They use the SimCity computer software that a lot of the students are aware of. Each year, the theme for the city has is changed. This year, the theme is going to be powering our future. How to design a city that the power stays on during a catastrophic event. <laughs> so if we have an earthquake, a tornado, or a hurricane, or a flood, the power has to stay on in the city. Because think about when we lose the power in a city, what happens and the catastrophes and the disasters that it causes. So the students are going to first model the city, write an essay on how the city is going to stay powered up, but then what they have to do is build a physical model of the city, a tabletop model. And maybe Connie can talk about the model. Well, the model has to be done with reclaimed materials. You're not allowed to spend more than $100 on your model. And that's so some, someone from a wealthy suburb whose father's an architect doesn't come in with a $10,000 Strathmore. So you come in and you, you build your model out of whatever is in your junk drawer, whatever you can scrape up. And it doesn't have to be super fancy, but it does have to exemplify what you're talking about. If you're talking about 
uh, a treatment plant, you should include a treatment plant in your model. And as Bob said, every year there's a different major focus because the modeling software where you design your city has hundreds of questions. And we'd be judging for the whole semester if we took every question into consideration. So every year they take one specific focus like power is this year, we've had feeding our future city, we've had getting around our future city, we've had getting in and out of our future city, which was airports. So every year it's slightly different. We've had emergency communications as a, as a topic, but because sometimes you have people who are interested, not just in power, because power is mandatory, you have to do power, but you could do other things if you have time all of the societies in the Chicago area give grants for additional prizes. So like IEEE um, gives a prize for the best emergency communication system, even though emergency comm isn't the focus this year. And all the different societies will give a prize that is geared to the focus of their society. So it's not just the main prize that kids win, it's all these other uh, prizes for additional work that they've done. So if you say, well, gee, I really wanted to work on radios, yeah. but they want power. Well, you can you have to do power, but you can still do radios, and you might just yeah. and you might just get uh, get some uh, get some attention for it. Now, that every January, usually the second or third Saturday in January, the students bring their models. Uh, it, for the past 15 years to the University of Illinois, Chicago Circle campus. Right down the road here. Right yeah. down, and uh, we um, have to then, the students have to now defend the design of the city. Engineers come up to them and ask them, what's your power system? Yeah. Well, how are you getting rid of your waste? How are you moving people yeah. around? Um, so the, uh, and I know you, Frank, have been a judge in the competition. And after everything is judged, we rank up all the points the, who's got the best model, the best presentation, the best essay, the best computer model, and we select five teams to be the finalists. And in the afternoon, the st students get put on stage and now have to give a seven to eight minute skit explaining their city. After that uh, uh, judging is done, we select the winning team. That winning team gets to go to Washington, D.C. to compete against teams from around the country. And now the program has gotten so big, we're getting uh, entries from around the world. I think last year we had a team from China, Canada, and other countries are now participating in this. Uh, the winning team, the three team members, you get this? They get a trip to space camp. Oh, excellent. I'm going to be on the team. <laughs> I, I like to go. Now, how can our schools get involved? Who do they contact? Okay, the national website is uh, www.futurecity.org. It's real easy okay. to remember. Okay. Future City. www.futurecity.org. You hear that, school principals, uh, science teachers? And if you want to go to Chicago, it's a little trickier, but you should still be able to remember it. Forward slash Illinois for the state dash not underscore okay. dash Chicago and that'll take you to the Chicago website okay. and you can just sign up there and hopefully we'll see teams from around the area yeah. and we get teams uh, from Chicago from the suburbs we even get all teams of Cook County all, 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 all get, over all, all over we get teams from uh, yeah. Urbana and for many years we were getting teams all the way from St. Louis from right. Missouri from Missouri but now St. Louis has decided <laughs> to have their own competition yeah. So uh, they've now got their own uh, future city competition. An important change was made to the rules about five years ago. It had been only schools that could participate. Yeah. Now, organized groups like a church youth group or a Boy Scout troop can field a future city team. They have to have an organizational representative, which is analogous to the teacher from the school, and then an engineer mentor who can be anybody who's familiar with engineering that wants to work with the team and, and help them uh, on their road. And most of the engineering societies, if you contact them, 
will look for a mentor well, if, if you're looking mentor, for yeah. one. If you don't, if you have a, a bunch of kids who want to participate and you don't have any adults who have engineering expertise, contacting IEEE, COI, any of the uh, engineering any association. of the local chapters of yeah. engineering associations, we'll find somebody in your area. We'll put the word out to our people to look for somebody to go and help, yeah, help your group. Yes, and it doesn't take a lot of time to be a mentor for a future city project, but you have to spend at least two or three visits with the kids. You don't have to be there every single day, but you have to be there to help them define their project, to make sure that they're staying on track with their yeah. project. Field questions. A lot of times, a lot of it can be done via email or text message. So it, it's not a huge expen expenditure of time, but it's an important expenditure of time because a lot of these kids come up with some really, really creative things. And one thing, when I was, I judged Future Cities a few years back and there, it was on, emer they had emergency planning was the focus that year. And three girls from Taft High School designed a Future City that took all the pets into consideration. <laughs> what was going to happen to your pet if an evacuation <laughs> order came in? And I mean, it, it was it was groundbreaking. Yeah. Two weeks later, FEMA came out with a report on Katrina yeah. that said a lot of people died because they wouldn't leave their pets, and, and they had to consider having shelters yeah. with that would take pets. So these three little girls who were in eighth grade at Taft Taft uh, Elementary <laughs> School. Had the idea, they, but they FEMA were a, had the idea. They were ahead of FEMA. And, and what happened there? And, and FEMA thinking, changed the rules. Because why, they're kids and they no. care about everyone. Mm -hmm. They care about the they animals. They wanted to save their pets. The, the uh, people, their family, and, and they cover everyone. Uh, that's a living creature, how to save them. Now, no. a future city will uh, have a kids learn how to write an essay. Right. I work on computers. computers to cover all facets. Well, what else? How right to give ask, a presentation. How to, how to presentation. stand up in front of a group and talk. How to, and how to, how to answer how to, questions. And how to answer, and how to build their the project. project. Uh, and also how to spend that one hundred dollars yeah. to do a project. It's not an expensive right. um, effort right. to do this. Right. Now, besides Future City, yes. there's a host of other competitions, okay. oh, yeah. and we have the uh, annual IIT. Um, bridge competition where high school physics students have to build a bridge model to strict specifications. Then the model gets tested, get this, to destruction. <laughs> destruction, that's and, the most uh, fun. <laughs> nobody gets killed. They're but, all uh, loaded. They all loaded. The bridges. <laughs> and the winning bridge yeah. is the bridge that can carry the most weight yeah. divided by the weight of the bridge. Oh. So who can design the bridge that's most efficient? Yeah. And uh, IIT's been hosting this for over 40 years. Oh, interesting. Uh, besides that competition, then there's the International Bridge Competition. And every other year, IIT hosts that. And just last night, I, just, I found out the international competition will be held at John Hopkins University in Baltimore uh, next year, probably in April sure. or May. But that's the IIT Bridge Competition. Thank you.